Okay, this is Janelle for SeattleShowGal.com. I'm here with Deja. Please say your last name. Calentuano. Beautiful. Is that Italian? Yes. Awesome. And we're here at Sunset for your CD release party for tea and vodka. Yes. Tea and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and so can you tell me a little bit about how you got in the music? Because I know like you were in Rotten Apples, Regaza. Blackie, your Coco Bellissimo with the <laughs> atomic bombshell. So you've got quite the long resume. I um I actually come from a musical background. My parents are both jazz musicians, so I grew up around a lot of musicians, and it was just kind of always in my world. And actually, honestly, I I never would have thought of anything else because it was just part of my life. <laughs> so <laughs> you've been being. singing since you were born basically yeah, pretty much awesome and was there ever a point where you really decided like this is what you wanted to do for your life yes I think I probably really when I was six I had decided that I was <laughs> gonna be a singer that was just it when I was 14 is when I first got into a band and really started pursuing it and trying to write songs within bands and whatnot well and like you said your parents were a huge influence because they were musicians as well? Well, yes, but they were never pushy about it. Like, I never was put into classes or anything like this. Uh, any any information that I gathered from them, I was asking for. I did uh, go to Cornish College for a couple of years, and that's where I met my second band. So, tea and vodka. How is this different? How did this come about? Because you've had, like I said, a couple different musical projects. I've been working in bands for a lot of years, and I just finally... I had made a decision that I needed to move out of Seattle for one thing, and I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do musically. I knew I wanted to do something a little bit different than what I had been doing, because Rotten Apples is a little bit more punk, new wave-ish. I just wanted to do something that was really exposed all the different sides of what I can do. This is the softer side of DJ. It was time, and I ran into Matt Bayless, who produced the record. He was like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm making a solo record. I didn't know <laughs> what I was talking about. And he, within five minutes, we had decided to work together. So that happened pretty fast. And then my move to New York sort of coincided with the same, at the same time. That was my next question. Like, what prompted you to move from Seattle? Because I remember right when I really started, like, because I was really excited. You're like, I'm moving to New York. I was like, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> so I know New York is where you're originally from, right? So was it just a return to your roots? Like, yeah. Seattle is just, just too... It's just going home. Yeah. I'm, I mean, New York is where my heart is. At Seattle, I have people here, and I love it. But New York is my home. And Mom's back there, and, you know. <laughs> So was New York a, a big plain part inspiration in tea and vodka? Um, not really, because I, I started making the record before I left. A lot of the music is sort of, it's sort of a culmination of like years throughout all of these bands, some songs that never saw the light of day or just never were um, produced in a way that I was um, really excited about. It's probably more Seattle than, than New York as far as inspiration. and. I'm putting it out myself on my label and you know I just kind of decided to take the reins and really try and make it happen whatever it is you know now tell me more about your label mad me on music it's at the moment there's only three acts and all three <laughs> of them are my projects but, <laughs> but you know that's it's just at the beginning stages it's so easy to do now or it's almost like you have to do that now major labels are like not that I even think that a major label would give me a deal because they're so like carbon copy and they're doing something very specific. Even if it was if something that I was after, it's just not, uh, it's hard to build a career even with a machine like that. You know, you really have to like create something that builds because that's the only thing that will stay, you know? And there's access to, so the internet just changed everything. Mm -hmm. It puts all the creative power back into like, the hands of the artists and the producers and you know I figure if I'm doing it and I'm really doing it I want to do it my way then why not well that's a great start do you have any future plans with the labels I would like to work there's some people that I would like to work with just as far as figuring out exactly what the machine is yeah. and then I can introduce artists to that you know using all of the connections and the contacts that I've got now so yeah so this is just kind of like creating a structure. Do you have any plans to revisit your your other musical projects like 
Bergaza. Bergaza is definitely still active. Rotten Apples, I'm sure that we'll do something. It will be in the future because a couple of the other members are very involved in stuff that's going on. Bigger stuff. <laughs> nice. But yeah, Bergaza is definitely still active. We're, we're writing and okay. you know, we still, we yeah. can do that from across the, the country <laughs> because it's mostly electronic or it starts with the yeah. beats and stuff. Sending back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Any other major things we need to know? Teen Vodka, get it now. Where can you get it? Yes, uh, you can get it at madmeowmusic.com. That's three words, Mad Meow Music. Also, it'll be available on Amazon, iTunes, Digistation, everything within the next three days. So awesome. it'll be pretty accessible. I'm excited to see your show. I'm glad to Thank see you, you back in Thank Seattle. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deja. No problem.